sometimes can come up in uh, nine ball where there's one ball on the table and uh, your uh, uh, ball you're hitting is frozen to the nine ball and you can see that the uh, they're they're frozen together and the the normal path for the nine ball when you hit it is about uh, six inches away from the pocket. So when you hit it, normally it will look like this. The nine ball needs to rotate clockwise in order to cause it to move to the left. The seven ball uh, has to has to ro has to rotate uh, counterclockwise in order to do that. But if the seven ball is going to rotate counterclockwise, it has to receive that 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 impulse uh, from the cue ball, which is going to have to be turning clockwise. So I'm going to try to put a put a, a clockwise moment on the cue ball, transfer that to the seven ball, which will in turn transfer a, a counterclockwise uh, moment on the, on the seven ball, which will cause the nine ball to turn clockwise, and which will cause it to uh, uh, move towards the pocket and take a curved path. See the nine ball. The nine ball actually actually hit here, so uh, uh, it moved almost uh, the almost the entire six inches. And uh, we'll do that shot again and uh, and show you a little closer how 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 these uh, uh, one more time. Putting excess angular momentum on the cue ball so that it imparts the, uh, the necessary momentum to cause the nine ball to go on a curved path into, into the pocket. There we got it. Made both balls at the same time. But you see, it is all about physics and when you apply the, uh, uh, the laws of physics to uh, what you're doing, and it, uh, uh, it's fascinating to see how it works.